During the war between Iraq and America, some innocent Iraqi people took refuge in a Turkish border to survive. This movie, Turtles Can Fly, beautifully portrays the impact and consequences of a war on the lives of those children. After watching this movie, close your eyes and think that these children's lives could have been yours. And most importantly, this movie is not just a movie. The children who acted in this movie were real refugees. So the movie is not based on any story. This harsh reality happened in the lives of these children. Hopefully, today's story will remain in your heart forever. There is a special request to watch the full video. So without further ado let's go to the main story of the movie. At the beginning of the movie we see a baby girl, the girl's name is Agarin. He came very slowly to the edge of a high hill. We are left to understand that this was the last moment of her life, and the last scene of this movie too. But why? And this question is answered throughout the movie. The event goes into flashback. This is the refugee camp where the Iraqi people took refuge. A few young boys were trying to fix the TV lines there. Everyone was eagerly waiting to hear the news of Saddam Hussein. The leader of these children was this boy, whose good name was Ibrahim. But everyone called him Satellite, because he worked on the TV line. We also see Agrin there, with a baby on his back. We will know the relationship of this child with Agrin. She approached Satellite for a long rope. It has only been a day since Agron arrived here from Iraq. Satellite was very smart, and very agile he fell in love with Agron the first time he saw her. In this village, there was analog dish which did not have many channels. Satellite was like a hero to everyone from the village elders to the children. This boy is now headed for the local market. Now he is going to buy a real satellite so that the villagers can watch TV better and know about the war situation. But the kid didn't have that much money, so he bought a big dish in exchange for some old radio and a little money saved up and returned to the village with that. Next we see an armless boy. He was the elder brother of Agrin. The child was twisting and opening a landmine buried in the ground, and Agrin was sitting next to him. These mines were planted by the Americans, and the main job of the children of this village is to pick up all these mines and sell them in the local market. These children used to collect deadly bombs like potatoes and onions and by selling them they lived. On the other hand, Satellite's friend Pashai is also giving justice to Satellite in the name of Agron's elder brother. Because he has been entering their area and collecting mines, and even had a fight with them. Hearing this, Satellite goes to the boy and scolds him a lot. Agron was also there. Then the boy quietly walked away from there. The little boy was tied to a tree. It was mainly for this reason that Agron brought the rope from Satellite. Agarin's elder brother takes the child in his arms and Satellite insults him by calling him handicapped. Then Agarin's elder brother came to Satellite and hit him with his head so hard that Satellite fell to the ground. All the children surround Satellite. Agarin and her elder brother left there and Satellites continue to harass them. Then the scene changes. Satellite brings the dish to the top of a building with the village kids and trying to put it there. Then we see another child. Basically this kid is the secretary of Satellite. He stays with Satellite all day. Villagers gathered around to hear the news of the battle. Seeing this, Satellite says, I will announce all the news of the war on the mosque's mic, you get out of here now. Hearing this, the villagers left here. The village chiefs all sat together to watch the news of the war. But none of them understood English very well, but Satellite understood English well. So Satellite was telling them what the news was saying. At night Agarin and his elder brother slept. Then Agarin's elder brother woke up, and he could no longer see the little boy between them. He asks Agarin waking up. Then we see the little boy, holding on to the barbed wire on the border, crying and calling his mother. Across the border is Iraq, which was his birthplace but today a barbed wire wall stands between this child and his homeland. Satellite and his friend were passing by when they saw the child they immediately took the child away. Meanwhile Agarin and his elder brother came there. Agarin's elder brother took the child in his arms and left, and the satellite looks at Agarin with a blind eyes, because he likes Agarin very much. The next day we see all the children of the village running to one place. As trucks are loaded with the remnants of missiles used in the war and if they arrange them, the children will get 10 dirhams. Agarin and his brother also came there. Agarin sits quietly in a corner, she was looking at these parts of the missile, 
because his parents were killed by this missile. But what luck they have to stow away those missiles now. The little boy was lost in the line of missiles while walking. He is crying and calling his mother. Agarin hears the baby crying but she sits there silently. She can't stand the kid, but why? What is the relationship between Agarin and this child? You will know the answer gradually. The next morning, Satellite gathers all the children together. Some of them send children to collect mines and some children to work in the fields. Basically Satellite was the leader of the children and the children did whatever he said. Then Agarin was passing by. When Satellite saw Agarin he took his cycle and chased her. Actually Agarin came to fetch drinking water while Satellite brought that water. He tries to befriend Agarin, but Agarin was getting annoyed by the words of Satellite. Then they stopped by a lake and asked Satellite to fetch a fish from the lake. Satellite immediately fell into the water and Agarin took this opportunity to escape. During the night, Agarin was sleeping with his brother and the baby but today the child is sleeping next to Agarin's brother. Agarin's elder brother knows that Agarin can't stand the kid at all. Agarin asks her brother, when we will leave here? Her brother tells her, you start loving this kid first. Agarin gets angry and says, this child is none of ours. Suddenly Agarin's teeth started to hurt. Then her brother brought some kerosene and said her to put it in the mouth. Agarin does so. Then Agarin's anger rises when her brother places the child between them. As night falls, Agarin goes to the lake with a drum of kerosene and a hurricane. Slowly get into the lake water and the kerosene spreads around her. Actually Agarin was going to set himself on fire. And that time in imagination she sees the little boy in the distance. The child is calling her, says, Didi, come back, I want to stay with you. Agarin is also a baby girl. And somewhere deep in her heart, there is love for this little innocent child. Then she returned to their tent and fell asleep hugging the baby. The next morning, the little children suddenly started bleeding from his noses and mouth. Agarin's elder brother is running to the doctor with the baby in his arms, Agarin is also walking behind him. Satellite and his friend were going through that road. Seeing Agarin brother, Satellite rushed to help him. Meanwhile, Agarin came to the corner of the hill walking alone. Then we get to know what is really going on in Agarin's mind. The village where Agarin lived, there some local soldiers started robbery, and some people who were there caught Agarin and tortured him physically. And among those who destroyed this little girl, the little child belonged to one of them, whom Agarin and her brother had stolen. And that's why Agarin can't stand the kid at all. Because those whose blood is flowing in the body of that child, they ruined the life of Agarin. On the other hand, we see Agarin's brother, they are going to the doctor on a satellite's bicycle. When he closed his eyes, he also saw the terrible brutality of war. The scene changes and we see the satellite cycling fast towards the village. Satellite is very nervous. He announces on the mosque's mic that the war is very close to us. American soldiers are very close to us now. Any time can be an attack here. He tells everyone to head for the high mountains. People started running towards the high mountains in panic. Everyone gathers at one place on the hill, but Agarin and her brother and the child do not go there. They sit quietly by themselves. Satellite comes to them and asks why they didn't go. But Agarin's elder brother remained silent as always. Then the little boy was playing with the two baby turtles he had and in the small amount of water accumulated there, he released the two turtles. In the meantime, two helicopters arrived there. Leaflets were being distributed to people standing on the hill. In this leaflet, Saddam Hussein called everyone to fight. The war has now entered the minds of the children of the village, they are also preparing for war. So Satellite goes to the local arms market. There he went to buy a heavy weapon so that he could protect his village, but the kid didn't have money to buy weapons. So he gave the mines to the shopkeeper and in return he takes a heavy machine gun. And with them it started to return to the village. At night, Agarin and her brother and the child were having dinner. Then Agarin asks her brother, when are we leaving from here? Agarin's brother replies that, we will leave when the child recovers in a day or two. Then Agarin says, this child will not go with us. If he goes, I will not go with you. I will leave here alone. Her brother says, I am not going anywhere leaving the child alone. Basically, 
Every time when she sees the child, she remembers that night. Agarin gets angry with her brother and goes to sleep. The next day, in the foggy morning, Agarin went out with the child on his back. The baby is sleeping on Agarin's back. He hasn't woken up yet. Agarin walks with the child and comes to a high hill. She takes the baby off his back. The child was still asleep. Agrin ties a little rope around the child's leg and ties the other end to a tree. By now the child has woken up. He is quietly leaning against the stone. Agarin goes to the child and caresses him for the last time. The child also loves Agarin but the kid doesn't understand that Agarin is leaving him here forever. Agarin left the child and started walking. The child stood up and called out to Agarin but Agarin does not answer his calls. Agarin slowly disappeared into the mist and the baby has started crying. He crying and calling his mother and also calling Agarin. But no one answers his call. The little baby's legs are tied so he can't even walk. The child started screaming and crying. The scene changes, Satellite is training other kids in the village to fight. They were building a shelter for the war then their teacher also came there. He calls everyone to read, but no one agrees to come. Satellite then says to the teacher, Sir, it is more important to learn weapons than to learn math. In the meantime, another village boy comes there, he tells Satellite about the little kids. The child was left by Agarin in a land full of mines. Then Satellite and the other kids run to it. The child was standing there, and there were many mines around his. Satellite signals the child not to move, but how much does that little baby understand? Everyone tries hard to keep the child calm and Satellite moves very slowly and cautiously towards the baby. Meanwhile, the little boy came very close to a mine. Satellite kept shouting and interrupting him but the little man touched the mine, and immediately it exploded. All around become silent and filled with smoke. Satellite suffered a lot of leg injuries but luckily the little boy survived and nothing happens with him. All the children of the village came to see Satellite, they are expressing a lot of grief for Satellite. Satellite then asks everyone to leave. In the meantime, Satellite's best friend Pashai is there and tells him that Saddam Hussein has been arrested today, and the war will end tomorrow. Then Satellite asks to announce this news through the mic of the mosque. Everyone is preparing to leave the refugee camp and go back to their homes. Agarin returns to their tent to find the little child she left behind. Agarin's older brother was sleeping next to him. Then Agarin takes the child in her arms and carries a rope. The scene changes as Agarin comes to the edge of the lake. She ties the child's leg with a little rope, and at the other end of the rope is a stone. Agarin throws the stone into the water. The child keeps getting lost in the deep water. The turtle in his pocket came out and sat there. The child is dead. Agarin's elder brother started running like a madman. He is crying and running. All around is empty, everyone has left the refugee camp. The child's self-screaming has become heavy all around. He came running to the side of the lake, Satellite was also sitting there. Agarin's elder brother jumps into the water he's seeing, the child for the last time. The child was under the water, with the rope tied to his feet. This part of the movie is not really worth watching. Then Agarin's brother started searching for Agarin like crazy, he shouted all around and called Agarin but there is no response. Agarin's elder brother comes on top of that high mountain, on the edge of the hill he saw Agarin's pair of shoes. And we also understand that Agarin has also got rid of this nightmare world. Agarin's elder brother grabbed his beloved sister's shoes with both his mouths and left with them. And the movie ends here. My dear friends, close your eyes and think that the children you have seen so far are real refugees. They are not professional actors in personal life. These children's lives could have been yours and mine. Thousands of children in Iraq, Syria and Palestine may have died with the nightmares of war. Maybe some of them still alive in some corner of the world. Prayers for them. I have nothing more to say about this movie. How do you like the movie must comment. And if this video has touched your heart, then click the subscribe button and subscribe to our channel. So far today.